Good. Recording. Okay. And uh, I don't know if you remember where we were uh, previously. <laughs> in the school building, of course. <laughs> okay, so in terms of the curriculum, I meant. In terms of the curriculum, we were talking about a Wiesenrad like this. And we said, let's talk about what happens up here compared to what happens down here, okay? And we were thinking about what happens to a person that's, who's sitting in here, and we had this thing moving, I think, was it clockwise, like in this direction? Okay, yes, we did. Okay, this was moving in this direction, and we said, okay, we're gonna have a person sitting here, I think, like this, yeah? And then the person down here is sitting over here, Oh, maybe colors would be good. Might be easier to see. I'm gonna use purple because purple is fun. So here's the purple person. Oh, is that hard to see? Is that okay? I'm gonna pretend that's okay to see. Purple person sitting there, and then the purple person is up here. For some reason, the person has no arms, I think, or something. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, but can you see the person? Is it visible? That purple is really terrible to see. Do you agree? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm feeling the same way. So I'm going to use yellow instead. Let's see if that works better. So here's the person there, and here's the person there. That better? Is it too small? Is it okay? Kind of small. Look at the customer service you guys are getting. I deserve a tip afterwards. I should have a tip jar. Bigger, good. Okay, we're gonna make a big container down here and a big container up here. Okay, and in here there is a seat. And on the seat is a person. Here, with an arms, arm there, and then there's a seat down here. Okay, this thing is spinning in this direction. Can you see that better? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, good. Thing is spinning in this direction. Here's the center. And we have a certain radius for this thing. Was it 15 meters or something? 50 meters, 40 meters? Does somebody have their notes? Who's a good note keeper? Ah, Leah. Forty meters, excellent, excellent. We have a radius of forty meters, and I think we also already found the speed that the person is moving at out there. And just a reminder on how to do that, we found that speed is the circumference divided by how long it takes to go around, and we said two pi r divided by the time. And from that, we found it to be how big? I think that's the last thing we did to find the speed, maybe close to the end. This should be a review. I hope this is a review. Is this a review? I think it's a review. Okay, what was the speed we found? Nicht alle auf einmal? Just pop in there, somebody. I 
Okay. Did we have did we have the period how long it took to spin around? I thought I thought we'd already determined the speed. Okay. Can you just say what you have? It was 15 meters per second. Yay. Good. Somebody says 15. Voila, there it is. Okay? Good. And then I think the next thing we did was we talked about um, how big is the force acting on the person at those times relative to the person's force of gravity. Does that sound familiar or is that like not where we were? Okay, I'm going to pretend that's true. Do we give a person a mass or do we not make that up yet? A hundred kg, that's a big person. Was that me? I think that's me. I think that's me. Okay, so we're going to go 100 kilos. This is apparently me. Well, how fun. I get to go to the Ferris wheel. So we said my mass is 100 kilos. And of course, if the mass, my mass is 100 kilograms, how much does gravity act on me? On 100 kilograms, how much, how much force of gravity is there on, on, a, on a mass of 100? I heard you all say a thousand newtons. Did I hear wrong or is that right? Yeah, okay, I heard a thousand newtons. And just a reminder about that, that the force of gravity acting on a person is m times g, okay? And m times g, well, g is, of course, 10 newtons per kilogram and Hyper nerdy people and Germans use 9.8 or 9.81 or 9.806, but we just use 10 because we're American, so we're allowed to do that. Okay? Good. So that means that is a thousand newtons of gravitational force acting on me as I'm sitting there. Everybody okay with that? Okay, your enthusiasm is keeping me going and uh, gives me purpose. So. So, is that green showing up? Yeah? Okay, so here's the force down here. Fg is equal to 1,000 newtons. And of course, up here, it also acts on me. The same force, Fg, is equal to a thousand newtons. Does it make sense so far? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Thumbs up. Okay, good. Sweet. Am I still moving or am I frozen? I feel like I'm frozen for some reason. I'm not sure if that's the internet problem, but yeah, you're frozen. I'm frozen. That's not good. I'm not sure what the deal is here. What's your problem? Why are we frozen? That's cool. But, but, you, but you hear my voice, eh? Yeah, yeah that's cool. I'm going to disconnect my camera and see if I turn it back on, if I'm going to be moving again. Let's see if that works. Oh, it worked. Hey, that's cool, right? Am I moving now? Yeah. Yay. I just can't see you at all. You can't see me at all? Oh, I, well, I've moved out yeah, of the picture. The Can you see me now? Oh, well, I think I'm, maybe that's you. It could be you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's you. Am I moving for the other people? Yeah. I can like shuffle back and forth. That's kind of fun, actually. Okay, are we good? Okay, cool, cool. So, let's talk about the bottom. Right at the bottom of this motion. Okay. Am I accelerating? Shit, am I frozen again? I'm frozen again. That's so awesome. That's so cool. I'm so glad we have good internet at school. But you can still hear my voice, correct? Okay, you can hear. I'm, I'm nodding. I'll just say what I'm doing. Nodding. Okay, good. So, um, at the bottom of the motion, while I'm moving in this circle with constant speed of 15 meters per second, am I accelerating? 
I am accelerating, that's correct. And why would you say I'm accelerating, Noah? Um, because you're, uh, the direction of the is changing. Good. I'm experiencing direction changing acceleration because I'm moving in a circle at constant speed. So my speed does not change, but because I'm moving in a circle, my direction is changing. That would make sense. So let me try if I can pop the camera back on. Oh, Lucy was thrown out. That's, oh, she's back. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, now let's see. I'm coming back on. Does the camera... Now the camera doesn't work at all. Sweet. This is awesome. I'm going to turn it back off. Turn it back on. Let's see. Work. Awesome. Perfect. What could be better than a non-working camera? I'm going to blame you guys. I'm not sure how it's your fault, but with the 7B, this worked great. So I'm, I'm sure it's you guys who are at fault. Do you feel bad? You should feel bad. It's somehow your fault. I'm not sure how, but I'm sure it's your fault. Let me go to Einstellungen and let me see if I can change something over here to make this work. Video. Yeah. Kamera wird gestartet. Oh, interesting. Interesting. It says Kamera wird gestartet. Okay. Maybe I could just plug it in and plug it out again and see where that happens. So, camera does not work. Camera does not work. Camera does not work. Yeah, that's hilarious. Okay. Okay, I tried the whole like unplug and plug back in. Let's see if it works to make my camera work now. Okay, one more try. I'm going to leave the meeting. Don't go away. I'm going to just leave the meeting and come back. <clears throat> Stay there. Yay! That worked. Okay, no idea why the camera was not working for a little while. Okay, so we decided that at the bottom... You're muted. Really? Seriously? Hi. I'm new to this technology. I'm just kidding. I know how to use it, actually. But uh, it was difficult. Okay, now we're good. So, now, uh, we now found out that at the bottom I'm accelerating. What causes acceleration? What is the source of acceleration? What is necessary for an acceleration to occur? What does Newton say about that? That was a question for you. Don't all answer at the same time. Oh, yes, the question was, we've decided that I'm accelerating at the bottom. And my question is, what is the source? What causes this acceleration? And Ben raised his hand. Please go ahead, Ben. Okay, it's true that I definitely do accelerate because the direction is changing. That is true. But my question is, what is necessary for an acceleration to occur? What causes an acceleration? Do you guys understand the question? Okay, I'll pretend you said yes, and I pretend now that somebody's raising their hand, and I pretend that person is saying, Newton has a law about this. It might be the second law. Okay, that was a good answer. And what does Newton's second law say? Yes. Force and equals mass acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration is correct. So if we have that, if we have an acceleration occurring, we must have a force causing that acceleration. And it looks to me like my I'm frozen again. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yes. That is perfect. 
Thank God I'm frozen. I turned my camera off. Let's turn it back on. Let's see if that works. That worked. Okay, good. So there must be a net force on me. Now, what direction are you accelerating when you're moving in a circle? Okay, we mentioned this before. Toward the center. Yes? Yeah? Center. Okay, good. Good. And that means at the bottom, force of gravity pulls me up and it must be a force acting upwards on me. The force upwards on me must be causing the acceleration. Okay? So um, at the bottom, I'm sitting here. What is acting on me to cause me to accelerate? Felina, you look like you know. You don't know. Okay. Felina, if I'm just sitting there, what causes me not to fall? Um, isn't that like something that's pushing you? Yeah, and being specifically, if I'm sitting on that bench, what keeps me from falling? I'm sitting on the bench in that Ferris wheel, and what keeps me from falling to the ground? Like what object keeps me? The bench. The bench pushes on me up. Agreed? So the bench pushes up on me. That's exactly correct. And we call that force the normal force. Okay? And you're frozen again. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Am I still frozen? No, that's good. Now it's good. Okay, good. So, okay. The, the normal force acts on me from the bench, on me. It acts up. A surface like that will hold you up and keep you from falling, which is good. So down here, the force is up, we'll draw it in, and the question I have for you is this, the bench pushes up on me as much as a thousand newtons, more than a thousand newtons, or less than a thousand newtons, and why? Maybe somebody besides Noah would be good. Anthony, Tony. We have a little issue with your microphone. Can you speak up a little bit? Okay. Go ahead, Tony. Okay. Less than a thousand newtons is your answer. You typed it in. Okay. Good. And a and, uh, little rough to tell, ask you now to explain why you think it's less than a thousand. Um, if it was less than a thousand, let's think about this for a second. If there's less than a thousand up and a thousand down, which direction would the net force be? The total force would be what direction? Wow, I'm frozen again. Downwards, downwards. But we know the net force is actually towards the center. It needs to be upwards. Okay, Tony agrees. So Tony, we're going to give you a chance to correct your answer. If the net force is up and we have a thousand newtons acting down, then how much must the bench push me up? More than a thousand, a thousand, or less than a thousand? And you can just use your thumb to indicate up, down, more. There you go. It should be more. Exactly. And I'm frozen again, which is so cool. This technology is awesome. I'm going to turn my camera back off, see if I can come back on. Let's see if that works. Oh, yeah, it worked. Yay! Okay, good. So, there we go. So, we're going to make Fn at the bottom. Oh, I'm frozen again. Cool, 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 cool. I'm not sure. It's something with you people, I'm sure. So, all right, here I am again. Maybe I should do this at home. My internet is probably better than the schools, which is kind of funny, um, but whatever. Okay, so, that means at the bottom, the normal force is bigger than 1,000 newtons. How about at the top? At the top, gravity acts down and the normal force acts up. Is the normal force at the top bigger than a thousand, equal to a thousand, or smaller than a thousand? Somebody besides Noah, I could call on somebody. That's everybody's favorite, I know. 
Okay, aversion of gazes is occurring, which is always a good sign. June looked up, so we'll call on June. See, there you go. June, so at the top, gravity acts down a thousand, and the bench pushes up. Does the bench push at a thousand, more than a thousand, or less than a thousand? Or are you unsure? You're not sure. Okay, June, tell me this. When I'm moving in a circle, am I accelerating? If I'm moving at constant speed, you are, because you're changing direction. And the acceleration is always in what direction? Towards the center. Towards the center. And at the top, where is the center? Down or up? Down. And if the acceleration is towards the center, down, then the net force should be... It should be less than a thousand for the net force to be down because then gravity is stronger than the normal force. Now, you've actually experienced this. So Fn up here is less than a thousand and down here Fn is greater than a thousand. Whoops. You've experienced this if you've ever been to a roller coaster. And on the roller coaster, at the top of the roller coaster, when you're coming over the hill, okay, you feel lighter or heavier? Lighter. Lighter. So the seat, you're, you're sitting on the seat. This is you, right? As you come off the top, you kind of, it's almost like you're flying. The seat no longer pushes on you as hard, so you feel lighter, okay? How heavy you feel is actually related to the normal force that's acting on you. So if you come over the top, because the pushing of the seat is less, you feel lighter because the normal force is smaller. On the other hand, when you come through the bottom, through a valley, do you feel lighter or heavier at the bottom? Heavier, right? You feel heavy. You feel like you're squashed. You're like, oh my gosh, it's like somebody dropped off a sack of potatoes on me. I feel crushed into my seat and what's happening there is the seat pushes into you harder and that's your perception of your weight is actually the normal force. There's a classic other device that we use um, where you notice this quite a bit where you feel heavier or lighter and we use it in tall buildings. It's an elevator, that's correct. So the same thing happens in the elevator. So when you have an elevator that's starting to move or stopping to move, depending on the direction that it's moving, you will feel heavier or lighter dependent on the same concept because the normal force is what you perceive. Okay? Cool, cool. All right. Um, wow, that was, that was really painful. And not just because the... Uh, the, the camera wasn't working. How do you guys feel about that experience? Was that a really fun physics learning experience? Yeah, you guys are lying to me. I like that. That's good. It's really important to be able to lie to others to make social interactions run more smoothly. So nice job on that team. And that's very impressive. Very impressive. Very, very good. So good. good. Okay. So um, we could actually find the values for how big the normal force is. Isn't that sound exciting? Okay, I'll pretend you said yes. That sounds so, so fun. Okay, yeah, that good. Okay, did we already have that on the board last time? Because it feels like we didn't remember anything or did you not write it down or where did we not do it last time? Okay, I'll pretend somebody said something. Noah, what'd you say? Um, well, first to answer that question, we calculated one of the values. Okay. Uh, but I think it's a combination of forgetting and not writing it down. Okay, we said it was 1560. Okay. question as well. Yeah, go, Noah. Um, so the 1,000 newtons that we've been comparing the normal force to, yeah. is that 1,000 newtons the, uh, the, force per, the force of newtons for the mass, or what do you refer to that as? Right. The 1,000 newtons is the force of gravity that... I experience that acts on me because I'm a big person. So because my mass is about 100 kilos, uh, 100 times 10 is 1,000. 
So for one of you guys, let's say your mass is 60 kilos, just for example, then 60 times 10 would be 600 newtons. So each of you might have a normal uh, a gravitational force acting on you anywhere from 450 to 800 newtons, guessing all your weights uh, at the same time. Okay, so um, there you go. So your mass in kilos times 10 is how much gravitational force acts on you. And if you want to be more precise, you can use 9.8 or 9.81, but 10 is very close and gives you a, a quick estimate of how much gravitational force acts on you. Okay, cool, cool. So somebody typed in that we already found the value for the uh, normal force at the bottom, and we found 1560 as the value here for the normal force. And did we find up here that it's 440? No, okay, that was a little bit of a giveaway, but that, that, that's, that is the correct answer. Let's, uh, let's make sure we switch problems because you look bored out of your minds, which is my aim, but maybe not as extreme as I'm witnessing right now. So maybe we switch the problem and I think maybe that will be helpful. Okay, cool, cool. So we're gonna switch the problem around. Oh, we used, we used that the uh, sum of the forces is equal to ma, okay? And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a different experiment. And actually, I'm going to show you an experiment. It would be cool if we could show you in person. Let me see. You see this? It, it's, it's a bucket. It has water in it. Okay, this is the actual chalk bucket. And I don't know if you've ever seen this experiment, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing it around and see if I can make it go over my head without the water falling out. Do you guys understand what I'm gonna do? Yeah, have you seen this before? Can you see me? Yeah, you can see me. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing it over here and swing it over the top, and then we're gonna think about it in terms of the physics of it, okay? Ready, set, woo! Is it actually in the picture? Oh, it is in the picture. Well, that's kind of fun. So, there we go. And um, if you don't believe me, there is actually water in here. So that worked, and I didn't even endanger any students of getting wet, which I normally do when I do it in class when you're there, but that's pretty cool. Let's figure out how that worked. So the experiment we did is actually not unlike the thing we just talked about. Okay, so we have here our bucket. But in order for us to That's a very ugly looking hand, if you're wondering. Okay, so, and we're going to estimate the distance from here to here to be um, about a meter, let's say a meter 20. Seems realistic as I'm swinging it around. Okay, and in order to make this a little bit easier to understand, we're going to think of a um, little ant or other animal. Ant sounds good because if we put uh, uh, like a puppy in there, that maybe sounds scary for the puppy. So let's go with ant rather than water. And, and let me explain why that's helpful. So here's the ant sitting at the bottom of the bucket. So the water not falling out is the equivalent of saying, how can we make the ant not fall out? Do you guys understand the question? Okay, good. So um, this thing is moving in this direction. We're gonna say it's moving at a constant speed. Okay, so, so the question I have for you is, 
what does it mean for something not to fall out of the bucket? For the ant not to fall off the bucket, what needs to be true between the bucket and the ant? Okay. It's something about the acceleration. I think you're on the right track, but I think the key word here is normal force, June, and I think you're on the right track there. Tell me about the normal force you experience once you lose contact with your own bucket. Okay. The ant loses contact with the bucket. Well, how much normal force acts between the bucket and the ant? when the ant is no longer touching the bucket. Did you say zero? None, that's correct. So the key thing here is, in order for the ant not to fall, we have to have normal force. Okay, good. So that's the key thing here. There must be a normal force. And which direction does the normal force of the bucket act on the ant? Tony, pointed it out already. He pointed in the direction of down. It's down, absolutely. The normal force is down. And riddle me this, which direction is the gravitational force? Also down, okay? So, the question I have for you, how is this possible if both forces if both forces act downwards, shouldn't the ant be accelerating downwards? No, because the force of, of, of the ant pushing against the bucket is more. No. <laughs> so, Santiago, it was, a, it was a trick question, man. How do I trick you? You're not sure? Not enough, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now shift the blame, why don't you? It's my fault, I'm sure. Okay, Santiago, let me help you out, buddy. Okay, so let me ask you this. The ant is moving in a circle at a constant speed. Is the ant accelerating? Oh, okay. I thought my tone of voice would help you say the right answer. So it's moving at a constant speed, but it's moving in a circle. So its direction is changing. So is it still accelerating? Yes, it is still accelerating because it's moving in a circle. And if you're moving in a circle at a constant speed, what direction is the acceleration? Is it towards the center? Yes, it is towards the center. I feel like that teacher from Ferris Bueller. Have you guys seen that? That's really fun. He like teaches the whole class by himself by tone of voice. No? Yeah? You like, did it increase or decrease? It increased. Indeed it did. Did the policy work? It did not work. He just keeps doing that, the whole thing. It was very funny. Feels familiar. Anyway, so the forces act down. The acceleration is down. So that's all good. That makes sense. It should be down because the acceleration is down. Okay, now, in order for us to not fall, that means the normal force has to be not zero. Okay, and that means that we have to have fast enough speed or otherwise the thing will fall. Now, you might be like, well, what does that mean? Well, if you imagine, I'm going to just give you a little, let me see if you can see this. It's hard to see with the bucket. But I'm going to use a little piece of chalk, and I think most of you have tried this before. If you like move it like this, you can kind of make this chalk stick to your hand, or so it seems. Do you see the motion I'm making? And the chalk does not fall out of my hand. Do you guys see that? You've done this before. It's a fun game, right? 
you're moving it around. But if I move it too slow, then it falls out. And just the same way the ant would fall out of the bucket if the motion was too slow. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll pretend you said yes. Now, in the moment that it loses contact, the normal force would become what number? Zero. Zero. Very good. The normal force would be zero. And that means, of course, in the moment the ant starts to fall, the normal force would become zero. Okay? Then the only force would be Fg. Okay? And Fg, of course, we know that is equal to Mg. Okay? It's equal to Mg. And if it is the only force acting, then that force would be equal to Ma. And Ma is mv squared over r because we are talking about a direction changing acceleration. Okay? So just a reminder, F equals MA. That's what Newton said. And in our case, A is V squared over R. So MG equals MV squared over R. And we can find V, the minimum speed we'd have to move at in order for this to work. The M's cancel. And we get V is equal to square root of g times r. Okay? And g is 10. r is 1.2. So v is equal to square root of 10 times 1.2, which is 3.7. I think that's right. It is right. Okay. So as long as the bucket's moving at about 3.7 meters per second, the water won't fall out. If we move faster than 3.7 meters per second, then the water uh, will definitely not fall out. Slower than 3.7, it would fall out. I'm not going to demonstrate that because then I would have the dirty, nasty chalk water falling on me. So there we go. I have recorded this horrible lesson that you all enjoyed so much, and I will post it. If you have questions about it, you can watch it again later. I think we're scheduled to meet again after break, um, and we'll do that. Uh, um, I, I will also occasionally, I will, the plan is to meet once a week um, on Google Meet and for to have one assignment from the book. If you haven't clicked on uh, submit. I've posted all the chapters from the book as an assignment. All you need to do is click saw it. Just say submit and then you're good to go. So I know you see and you know how to access those. Um, before I leave, we have two more minutes. I, I just want to encourage you to make the best of this time. I know it's difficult. Uh, it's key for you to remember a couple things. Thing one is um, the most important person in making your education happen is yourself. That's the first thing. The second thing is, this break, it's best if you think about this break lasting way longer than it's been announced. It will probably last way longer than that. I don't know if you've thought about that, but my guess is that we will not come back to school before the end of ski break or winter break. So if you think we're coming back January 10th, I don't think that's going to happen probably going to be like February 10th. And that means that you need to make sure you learn what you need to learn in order to get smarter because, you know, that's what you got to do. Especially because you got Oberstufe coming up, MSA coming up, important things coming up. I hope that was semi-inspirational and not makes you feel even horribler about this whole thing. And I wish you a merry whatever you celebrate, Christmas, Hanukkah, Festivus, Saturnalia, uh, and all that stuff, and a new year. Noah. Um, uh, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. One, um, how, how do we calculate the acceleration that we use in the first problem when we try to, mm -hmm. or when we use F equals MA 
to yeah. find the uh, yeah. inverse. We used, yeah, we used v squared divided by r. So the speed squared divided by r gives you the, cent the, the direction changing acceleration. Why is Micah on the screen like 12 times? Nobody knows. Okay, does he have like 12 devices or is he like keeping just clicking on it? We do not know. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, just checking. All right, that's that. Okay, so have a good break. I will uh, see you guys in January. Have a happy new year and stay healthy if you are healthy and if you're not healthy, get healthy. Okay, bye-bye.